What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today I've got a knife that I've uh, been kind of patiently waiting for for close to a month now, I think, on this one. Uh, it's my buddy Matt, and uh, he's been waiting for this one for a little while. Uh, I guess they're a little challenging to get, so I wanted to show you. A Riet T1000 in Tool Steel 3V, serial number 226, and I believe it is a Tanto. We'll get into it and find out, but I can't even remember. Um, you are, we're going to experience this together. I uh, haven't really looked at it, so I don't know what to expect. And really excited. Just a quick reminder before I open things up, bladezilla.ca is the website. If there's any questions, I know I get asked all the time what website I represent. Well, there you go. Bladezilla.ca, lots of sheer gore offs and uh, some harder to find stuff in Canada. Uh, anything listed there is ready to go. So let's get into it. Nice little uh, ticket pack. That's nice. I don't know what's in there, but I'm sure we will find out. And then the knife itself, which I'm sure we're going to spend a lot of time with. But before we go into it, let's look at this and uh, make a mess of all the accessories. Assuming that's what we got in here. Looks like a knife bag or cloth. A Riet sticker. Okay, that's everything. Okay, so there we go. T1000. So a metal certificate. Alvin Lee. Serial number 226. Date of manufacturing late 2022. CPM 3V tie handle. Super cool. And then a couple hashtags to follow if you're into that sort of thing. I don't know if I am or not. Just kidding, obviously I am. A uh, little knife bag, which is always good. Carrying knives, cleaning the blade, etc. Looks like it comes with some hardware as well. Not sure where that would go, but uh, hey, you know what? Anytime you get some freebies that come with this stuff, um, it's always a good thing, especially when they're made overseas. And then a cloth. So, uh, oh, and this guy. Little patch you can throw on your bag or your backpack or whatever. That's cool. Anytime you get anything with a knife, I always uh, feel like it's it's always appreciated. So, all right, I'm gonna throw this stuff back in here and then cut to the knife. One sec. All right, everything's back in the bag, and I just want to comment. Usually, when I import knives, this would be the first thing that would get uh, thrown out through customs. So I'm really stoked that uh, this came in with it. So, um, pretty pumped on that. Uh, the knife itself, oh. Uh, I got the lightweight model, as we can see here. It's uh, honed out in the flipper tab. I'm just kidding. It's not the lightweight model. This thing is an absolute beast. Um, oh, you can, look at oh my god! I've never, I've never seen something so big. That's what she said. Let's get into this. Um, I don't even know where to start, but let's do our usual. Let's do do dimensions. Let's measure it. Let's get some weights on it because this has got to be in excess of, it's got to be double the weight of a normal knife. Look at the blade stock, man. It's got to be 10 out 10? No, we'll find out. Um, okay, so a couple things. In order for me to open this, I've got to learn how to use this little uh, locking mechanism, which I think is up on the handle here. But you can see, see in here we've got two little pins that are controlled by these little buttons. So those little pins kind of lock the actual flipper tab, I believe. Yeah, so, hear that? I'll get the mic nice and close. So it cannot open. It's locked right now. So I believe you push this forward, which has two little forks inside the top of this that should unlock these buttons. Let's find out. There we go like clockwork. So now the flipper tab should work, I think. Ah, there we go. Oh, look at this thing. How beautiful is that? Oh man, I want this knife. Okay, this is just not even fair. Okay, let's get the tape measure here. Uh, one sec. All right, let's take some measurements. You know, I tell you, I see a lot of knives on this channel and uh, Sometimes it's not even the super, super expensive ones that get me, that gets me all excited. It's just an oddball that just does things different, and that's what's so cool. 
Um, so let's take a look. So I guess ground blade length is like three and a half ish. And then uh, to the center of the choil, it'll be closer to four. Uh, actual cutting on the flats, like two and a quarter. That is a humongous compound grind tanto. That looks to me like it's a bit of a hollow grind, I'm sure. It would have to be on a blade this thick. The handle length is uh, over five inches. And the overall length of the knife, I probably should have done that first. Nine inches or so, a little, little bit under nine inches. But um, yeah, absolute beef, beefy boy. Let's get a weight on this. If we're guessing, I'm gonna say it's uh, it's got to be 10 ounces. Oh. It would have to be. Let's take a look. 10.9. Is that what I'm reading? Is that right? Almost 11. Oh. 10.9 or in grams 3, 309. So remember, plus or minus a little bit, it's uh, it's going to be in excess of 10, almost 11 ounces. It's uh, at that weight. Does it really matter if it's 10.8, 10.9, whatever? It's an absolute beast. Absolute beast of a knife. And uh, note, the pins are still open from earlier. So I think, yeah, you just close them like that and locks it back up. Cool. So let's talk about this knife, the T1000, the Terminator knife. It looks like it's from the future. Uh, this particular offering is done in CPM 3V tool steel, which hopefully you can see on the blade there. It's written, thank God you can see something on there. But, uh, oh my God, you know, this kind of reminds me of uh, just if you kind of, you know, um, if you kind of close your eyes a little bit and look at the handle and just kind of blur it, it kind of looks like the Altai 111 from Shergoroff, Custom Division, kind of, gives me that vibe just because it's got some unique lines to it. What can I say about this? Okay, so action is actually surprisingly smooth. Um, I've been told it runs on ceramic bearings. Um, I don't know if that's necessary, but uh, it's just, the action's good enough. Like it's a heavy blade. The action is going to be, regardless if a knife this size would be on washers, the action should be good. The blade is so heavy, it's going to swing. Lots of different screws, lots of, uh, lots of unique features. I wish I knew more about the knife itself, and I don't. We've got Torx hardware all over here. Pretty big stuff too. I don't know if it's 10 or what, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure you can figure that one out by looking online. You know this is like a coffee, saw, or coffee shop talk. I'm not going into every single little detail. But, uh, oh my gosh. We've got thumb studs and a flipper. My question is, is it an actual stop? Because we can see that it, can, it contacts on this point here. Or can you actually utilize it as a flipper? I'm going to try. Remember, um, I wrapped around a tripod. It is difficult for me, but I will try. I'm going to need some momentum here, but... Oh, try again. Yeah, second try. It's, uh, it, it's strong. It, like, when you have a blade this heavy, you're going to have a really strong detent. You do get some weight savings, as sad as that is. They say it's got some claimed weight savings and you can see some milling. You can see the blade material. That is some huge frickin' jimping. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit of a reach. Remember, I've got extra large hands and uh, I, can, I can hit that, but I'm more comfortable on, the, on this spot here with the like kind of micro jimping, if you want to call, call it that. Um, for such a big, heavy knife, it fits my hands well. I don't feel any hot spots. And I like how all the beveling around here is uh, just done really smooth. It's, uh, it's quite comfortable. Balance, should I dare do this? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty damn... It's yeah, just behind the pivot. So it's good. And maybe that's why they took some weight out of that blade. 
beautiful, beautiful grind on this as well. Hopefully you can kind of see some of the, the belt lines on there. Hopefully you can. Um, it is a hollow grind, as you should suspect, as I mentioned earlier, because it's such a thick blade stock. I don't know what that is, but that has to be the thickest blade of any knife I have in my uh, in my collection here. That's just it's got to be twice as thick as anything I have. <laughs> it's heavy. It's uh, this is the kind of knife that you like pull out, and you're gonna have people asking questions about it because it's so ridiculous. You're not gonna be able to carry this in like NBA style board shorts. It's just gonna, unless you want people to think you're happy to see them, it's gonna be moving all over the place. It's huge. And there's gonna be a lot of puns in this video because I, I can't help it, but it's just, it's huge, man. Look at the thing. Thumb studs are nice too. Like I was able to flip it second try. I do like that they're not sharp. They are kind of like a rounded, kind of volcano, which is nice. Kind of reminds me of like the McNeese thumb studs in that way. Another thing that uh, I think, if, I'm if I can remember this knife correctly, I think you can lock the blade closed or open like this too. So I think these will still push in. And now I think the blade, yeah. So it's like, it's almost like a locked fixed blade now, which is a nice little feature, right? When you have the ability to lock things, so you're doing lots of cutting, heavy, heavy work, and you just don't want to risk the knife slipping out of out of the frame lock, which is, uh, yeah, for looking at it, we're probably, you know, 15%, which is about right. But I bet you that 15% is like more than half of normal blades. So right now it is nice. I can't physically uh, unlock it. It's it's locked in, in fixed mode. So I think if I do this again on the button, let's try it out. There we go, those pins push out, and comes down. Blade centering, I know this is like uh, my buddy Matt's biggest stickling, sticking point, and yes, I believe we are dead center. Thank God. Should be, you know, they, uh, they've been making some ultra, ultra nice knives and uh, I don't I don't have an issue with these guys lately there's there's not like anyone you know if they're even 99% accurate and 99% perfect there's still gonna be one out of a hundred that has uh, some kind of problem and uh, lately they're the ones that I think are kind of the gold standard for OEMs in China doing a lot of the uh, designer lines I suppose it's just so weird having that lock there I'll say this, it's kind of a weird position for that bumper unless you are trying to use it for your thumb. It's like you have to train your brain around, okay, if I wanna flip this and it's locked, this is the position I hold the knife in, right? And it's like, okay, I can't physically reach this very well with my finger, it's, it's a little hard. I can do it, but it is hard. It's easier if I have to rotate the knife and use my thumb to push that up and then flip it open. But that is a humongous swing. Oh. I don't even want to put my finger under it. Because that's just... I worry that's going to cut my finger off. Um, internally, it's... You know, they say there's weight milling. I, I don't see a whole lot of it inside here, to be honest. It's pretty flat. It's a couple little details, but nothing, uh, nothing major. Nothing major at all. Now, my question is that I'm looking at this... And I don't know much about this knife, but I'm just looking at this going, this is awfully interesting that there's like a track system here and another spot. Now, is that for something? Is there a reason for that? Or is that just design? Please let me know. I'm generally very curious on these things. This is an initial impressions kind of thing. I have not read about the knife. I don't know much about it other than it's a tank. Uh, in terms of comparisons, Let's grab a couple knives that are, I, I don't even have anything that's going to be humongous. I've got a hinder or clips. That's about as big as I've got right now. And let's be honest, if I put this, it would be more representative looking at it from that angle. Like, come on. Um, we can grab a, 
Uh, we could grab like an F95. For just sheer size, length. I want, I want you guys to know, this is like twice the height of this knife. Sitting down, it might look similar, but it is literally twice the height of this thing. Like, please tell me you can see that. It's, it's nuts. The F95 is not a small knife. This is like perfect. It's bigger than most people want to carry, but because of how thin it is, it's doable for a four inch blade. It is half the thickness of this. Or, or maybe more with those pins one yeah maybe more than two oh. um, continuing on here um, I'll grab I, I don't even have anything that big to show I can grab my Sebenza and maybe a Spartan Harsey that'd be a good one let's put this away so there we go Spartan Harsey, which uh, is more in that kind of price point too. Large Sebenza. So just remember, we're looking at size here. You're really just looking at length, but the width of the handle, it's a little different. It's, it's obviously big, but the overall girth is uh, it's just it's a thick beast. There's that pun, right? I was talking about earlier. I'm so sorry in advance. Uh, the Yum-Num's on, I'll probably throw that in there too. Uh, here's your Zon. Which, uh, you know, it's you're kind of starting to get into that heavy hitter category of just the big stuff. And let's move that down and show the size. Like this, the, the Zon feels like a toy compared to this. And the Zon is not a small knife. Most people think it's very burly and very, uh, for Chris Reeves, it's their burly knife. It feels like a matchstick by comparison to this. Like, the Yumnun's on is like the tax the T1000 pays on its paycheck. That's what it feels like. It's just nuts, man. But uh, beautiful, beautiful knife. I, I don't think I've ever felt something so burly. Um, you know, it kind of has some um, uh, some reminiscence to the Chavez 229. I, I have a couple of them, but they're uh, they're not case knives. They're put away. Um, yeah, they. Uh, oh, I, I understand the grind. I love that lock. The grind is just something that is so riot in the bevel. The compound, just what they do so well. And it's just so identifiable. Like you see a knife like this, you're like, oh yeah, that's a Riot grind on there. The jipping is just something I, I can't get over. I'm trying to figure out why they did this so big. Like, okay, you're, here's where your thumb naturally wants to fall. Why, why put such heavy, thick jimping up top unless it's for something? And then if I'm looking at this correctly, it's almost like they finished inside of it. With a satin or something, I, maybe it's a little different. It's, maybe it's just because I'm looking at the top of the belt grind on the blade there. And then the inside's kind of like a stonewash satin look. Kind of matches the, uh, the jimping there. And then down the handle we go. We have that button that sits nice and flush. Which is nice. Then that same hole, right? Same style where we have the hole under the clip or in the clip, we have the hole on the frame, right? It kind of just matches that whole style. We've got some notching on there, which looks nice and cool. And then we go down into the pocket clip or the lanyard, sorry. And you can put a lanyard hole on there. It's nice, um, non-removable which doesn't look too bad, but uh, you know, there are gonna be the purists that say, if I drop this and bust this, it's gonna be a problem. Now it's luckily not built into the frame, it is into the back spacer, so you know, maybe parts are available, I don't know. The pocket clip's pretty standard, easily accessible, there's no hidden bolts under it, under it that I can see, which is awesome. Just a nice little feature. Uh, it is leaning on, 
the lock bar, which is interesting, right? Remember how sure go off they kind of do, uh, you know, all the all the weight of it tends to go on one side, whereas this is split both on the frame and the lock bar. So that's an interesting choice how they did that. Hope you can see what I'm saying here. I'm trying to focus on the clip. But then again, that blade is so goddamn heavy that I don't know if it matters. Like, you really need to crack this thing to get it out. The detent is, uh, I'd say, medium plus. Uh, maybe not. Maybe a medium. But the blade, once it gets going, it's just so heavy. I'm trying to fail it, which you can do. And let's be honest, you're not flicking it out like that. You know, I'm curious if anyone can get their little fingers in here and reverse flick it. That'd be kind of cool. But overall, it's just, it's a super cool knife. Like, uh, I'm super jealous of this one. I love the lock. I love, uh, I love that there's just some super cool Terminator style, futuristic lines on it. Big, big cuts, big grinds, big bevels you know, pockets of milling, even up on the top here, you know, they don't have to do these milling lines, but it fits the whole function of it and just makes it look so futuristic. The uh, the top is flush, which is nice as well, just because it's going to fit in your pocket a little better. We've got a couple lines here that you're probably wondering, oh, what are these there? I'm assuming that's where the uh, thumb studs will probably sit in place, if I'm guessing. Yeah, so you can see those little holes right here. That's where the thumb studs will contact. So a lot of lock points. We've got there, we've got big stop pins inside here. Feels like a ramped detent. And then that lock, I'm trying to show you that lock from the inside where those pins can kind of go. I guess you can lock it down there too. I don't know why you'd want to do that. You're not supposed to probably, but you can. It's as easy as going, bloop, pins open, and we're off to the races. That's an interesting one. I just, I love, I love having the fact that I can lock this thing out in hand. And, you know, you put it away, and maybe it's, maybe you're a parent and you know you're, you leave your knives out which probably isn't a good idea but maybe you do that and this just adds some sense of security to me in that it's like hey you know what unless you know how to open this it's not really intuitive to slide this little lever up here in my opinion because you look at it and you might just think it's part of this it's just a gripping point pop those pins and now you're back in business furthermore like i talked about lock it off again and now you're doing some heavy duty cutting tasks and it is rock solid no play other than that's when i was holding the lock bar open like this you can get play obviously but it's pinned in it can't go anywhere the tolerances are only as tight as the pin on the blade so no play at all action super smooth i'm really impressed with this I, and i didn't think i would be i, I thought this was a bit of a toy when I saw it, I'm like, it's, it's heavy, it's, it's ridiculous, it's beefy, it's a tank. I really thought it was kind of silly. In hand, I don't think that at all. I just think it has so much cool factor, and it is so freaking unique compared to some of the other knives that we often have. And I want one. <laughs> just, just to have one. Um, I'm assuming they've done some dressier versions, maybe some cool clip or something. But if you know me, I love plain Jane, just like this, which is probably why this knife is just calling me. And that is a call I may have to answer at some point. But my God, what a cool, cool design. You're lucky, Maddie. I don't know how often these things come out, but I know people have been waiting for these things for, I think, a few years now. And I'm assuming, you know, it's numbered, so it's probably going to be high demand. But just so cool. 
I'm kind of wondering who's going to put this in their pocket without it locked out. Um, I wonder who does that, or if you can just push in one pin. Let's find out. You can do one pin. That's interesting. We'll unlock one. Yep. Yeah. We'll do the other. Yep. Yeah. I'm wondering why they allow you to do that, but that's cool. I'm just wondering, do you think people would carry this? Would you carry this with it not locked off like that? It'd be like carrying a loaded gun around. Except the loaded gun would probably weigh less than this. See what I did there? That's funny, eh? I'm a goofy guy. Uh, what else do we got here? I wanted to look inside the uh, the back a little bit here. I didn't know if it was actually numbered. Oh, look, it is. It is numbered on the inside, 226 on the heel or inside the uh, backspacer there. I didn't think it was actually numbered in there. I thought it would be stamped somewhere on the blade, but that's cool. Um, that's, I mean, uh, I didn't notice that at first. So nice little add on, nice little touch. Good action, big knife. Um, I just, uh, the Riyadh's written there, that's cool. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm trying to notice that I might have missed. I'm sure I missed about, you know, a dozen or so things that are like ultra critical to some kind of knife review. But, um, you know, you know me, I just like to talk about what I see. And if there's something I missed, please let me know. Obviously, I didn't talk about the, the uh, jimping on the tab and the flipper, which is nice and, uh, oh, just like an, a more aggressive F95 that's like ultra thick. You have so much landscape to get your finger on. You're not pushing it down, you are pulling it back. Right? When you pull this down, are you worried about your finger going inside? Uh, typically, yes. And there is lots of room in there if you have little fingers. Just be aware that uh, that might be a drawback for some. If your finger goes in there, there's nothing to get stuck on or anything like that, but it's not beveled or anything. But it is kind of rounded, just not, doesn't have that traditional cutout there. Just keep in mind. Now the question is, do we see, I wonder if someone will make like a kickstop version of this. Just get rid of that and add a little more carry factor. That's a wish list. I, I doubt that'll ever happen. Could you imagine? Or a magna cut. I'm sure that'll be coming to the, the T2000 Magna Cut. Oh man, super cool. I also just like the lines here, like the with the pins out like this. And then you see how one, two, three, those are also kind of poking out like those pins. You know, you could just as easily make that flush, but I like how the lines are as such, where it's like, no, we're gonna poke those out because that is the general theme of the knife, even with these in, right? It just looks the part in every way. Oh, <laughs> I'm just blown away. Oh man. Okay, well I think that's gonna kind of end this, uh, for me anyway. And uh, there's the knife. There's your Riot T1000 Ultra Beefy Tank Doomsday Pocket Axe slash um, Rampage Killing Spree Weapon that uh, is just so cool. I could see people taking this thing for heavy work, like, honestly. Um, that is just about as cool as it gets. Okay guys, well thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Otherwise, bl uh, visit bladezilla.ca for a lot of knives, info and whatnot. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and uh, there's another one I'm on now, Threads. <laughs> So follow me, send me a message, email bladezilla.ca. Otherwise, just leave a comment and uh, say hi. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Have yourselves a good week. Peace.